Both Tutsis and Hutus who opposed the genocidal government had taken refuge at Hotel de Mille Collines since April 1994. When the government armed forces were deterred from their planned attacks on the hotel from 2nd May by the French government, negotiations began with the RPF forces in order to relocate these refugees to RPF-controlled zones. Unfortunately, the government soldiers and the Nirangi militia disregarded the agreement and set up roadblocks and attacked Tutsis being transported in Unamir trucks. These attacks resulted in the death of many, including Captain Bai Dian of Unamir, who was trying to protect Tutsi refugees being transported. Evacuation of the refugees from Hotel de Mille Collines and the death of Captain Bai Dian of Unamir. Hotel de Mille Collines in Kigali had become a refuge for people from across the city of Kigali. Mostly Tutsis and Hutus were dissidents to the genocidal government. Let us recall that on May 2, 1994, the armed forces of the genocidal government, led by General Gistevi Zimungu, wanted to kill Tutsis who had taken refuge at the Hotel de Mille Collines, but France prevented them from doing so. As the information was taken up by newspapers in France, including L'Express on June 2, 1994, and Billet d'Afrique, number 31, which was published in February 1996. It is the Director General at the Presidency of the French Republic, Bruno Dallaire, who had received a mission from the President Mitterrand to ask General Gustave Zimungu to stop this action. Based on the achievements of the ongoing negotiations between the so-called Abatabazi government and the RPF Ngotani forces to relocate the refugees who are taken refuge at Hotel de Mille Collines and take them to the desired area, the operation took place from 27th May 1994. Unfortunately, the genocidal government forces did not comply with the agreement because the Iner Hamni and the Musa Migambi militia continued to set up roadblocks at the various locations in Kigali City controlled by the criminal government forces. They removed Tutsis from Unamir trucks and killed them. Captain Baedian tried to block the way for Iner Hamni with the aim of preventing them from taking Tutsis out of Unamir trucks and kill them. He was shot dead at a roadblock while protecting Tutsis from Iner Hamni who had wanted to kill them. Captain Baedian died at the age of 36. On July 4, 2010, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Rwanda awarded Captain Baedian a medal as a guardian of pact for his extraordinary bravery in saving lives during the genocide against the Tutsi. If all Unamir soldiers had acted like Captain Baedian, the genocide would have been stopped and many more Tutsis would have survived. Unamir temporarily suspended the evacuation of people from Hotel de Mille Collines and confirmed the massacres of Tutsis in Kabgai. On June 1, 1994, one day after the death of Captain Baedian, Unamir announced that it had suspended the evacuation operation as long as the roadblocks were not removed from the roads and that the government soldiers and Ine Ramge had not stopped interfering with the Unamir's work. The actions of the government forces and Ine Ramge militia to impede the relocation of people to RPF Ngotani controlled areas allowed the killers to continue the killing of Tutsis who were still hiding in Kigali. Tutsis slaughtered on these dates could have been rescued if the self proclaimed Abatawazi government had complied with the ceasefire agreement between the RPF Ngotani and the government's military leadership to let Unamir relocate people to their desired areas. On the same day, various international radio stations, including Radio France Internationale, RFI, British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, Voice of America and Voice of Germany, Deutsche Welle, announced the content of UNAMIR's declaration concerning the investigation into the assassination of Tutsis in Kabgai. In its declaration, UNAMIR clarified that its envoys to Kabgai were aware of reports some Tutsis had been taken from the refugee camp and killed by the Inheramwe militia and government soldiers. Unamir explained that its envoys were also able to find some of the bodies but refrained from disclosing much about the number of the victims. Nevertheless, reports from the media and international non-government organizations like the ICRC and Oxfam, which operated in the camp, estimated that more than 500 Tutsis had been kidnapped and killed in a very short period of time. On the same day, Canadian Minister of Defence arrived in Rwanda to assess the welfare of the Canadian Armed Forces in Unamir 
and analyze how Canada could send about 300 communication experts to Rwanda. Canada had agreed to deploy communication experts to Rwanda in the context of strengthening its second UNAMIR mandate by the United Nations to increase its troops and staff. VOA News reported that Egypt had sold arms to the Abatawazi government worth $750,000 U.S. dollars in violation of the United Nations Security Council resolution. The United Nations had banned all countries from selling weapons to the Rwandan government and its forces for its role in the genocide against the Tutsi. Thank you for listening to another episode of Kwibuka Podcast. As always, make sure you leave us a review, sharing what you like about the podcast, and share with others who would be interested in listening.